1957, the Soviet Union launched the Sputnik satellite into orbit. They beat America into space. And the U.S. feared that they were falling behind. One of our greatest and most glaring deficiencies is the failure of us in this country to give high priority enough to scientific education. American newsreels like this one stoked anxieties that the country was wasting its intellectual talents. Are more than 200,000 each year of our ablest high school graduates we must get along without higher education. So in 1958, President Eisenhower signed a bill that let college students borrow up to $1,000 a year from the federal government. And ever since, student loans have helped more and more people go to college. But as demand for higher education increased, the cost did too. So students took out bigger loans each year. In the early 1970s, the average loan was about $1,000 a year in today's dollars. Now, it's around $7,000 a year. And when you factor in interest, the average person with debt owes about $30,000 when they get their bachelor's degree. If we combine all the student debt Americans currently owe, it adds up to $1.6 trillion dollars. This is the student debt crisis. But what if the government canceled all of this debt? Under the proposal that we introduced today, all student debt would be canceled in six months. We are going to roll back student loan debt for about 95% of students who have debt. But $1.6 trillion is a lot of debt to cancel. So it's worth asking, who exactly would this help? The millennial generation was told that the only way they would get the good jobs available is if they received a college education. Tens of thousands, hundreds of thousands, millions, billions of dollars to our students. And it is now crushing them. First, let's look at exactly who owes this money. Each of these bubbles represents about a thousand households. The bigger the bubble, the more they owe. So first, let's organize the debts by age. Okay, we can clearly see that most of the debt is owed by people in their 20s and 30s. That includes some of these really huge debts held by relatively few people. And since younger people haven't had time to build wealth, it means the net worth of people with student loans are on the lower end. So it seems like canceling student debt would overwhelmingly help younger people who don't have money. But let's dig a little deeper. Let's try organizing the debts by education level. This way we can see what their student loans paid for. The biggest group are those with bachelor's degrees. But the most debt is held by people who either have a master's or beyond, like a PhD or an MD. And they owe a lot of money. But when we organize these debts by household income, we can see that many of these people also earn a lot of money. In fact, the majority of debt is held by people here in the middle class. And these people earn more money because they have an education. So let's add our findings to the list. It looks like the main beneficiaries are younger people who don't have a lot of money yet, but they have the degrees and jobs to give them a promising future. Bernie Sanders wants to cancel student debt for everyone, including people over here who earn hundreds of thousands of dollars a year. Elizabeth Warren wants to cancel all debt for these bubbles, households earning less than $100,000 a year. Above $100,000, the loan forgiveness phases out until we reach $250,000. So these people wouldn't get any help. Here's the hard thing about canceling student debt. All these people had the opportunity to go to college, and many of them do okay because of it. But here is everyone else, the white dots who didn't go to college, many of whom never got the chance. Canceling the country's student debt won't help them at all. But for Sanders and Warren, this is part of a larger belief about what America should be. Right now, we have an economy in the 21st century that basically says you're gonna need some post-high school training. A century ago, when that was true about high school, we made high school free for everybody. People should not be punished for getting a higher education in a competitive global economy. 70 years ago, America was worried great students were being fenced out of college. People who could save the country. People who could help America get ahead. They've got the flag up now, and you can see the stars and stripes on the wind. Now this conversation is about who is allowed to build a stable future. 
and the great debts we pay for a desperate chance at that dream. Thank you.